Hello my friends and welcome to Youth Potential, a channel dedicated to helping young people with mental health problems. I have two books available, 102 Distraction Techniques and Self-Harm to Self-Harmony. Both of these books are only available on Amazon. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hello my friends, Scott here representing Youth Potential. Okay, before I had um, a hospital admission, I asked you guys, what did you want to see? And you guys voted for this video, The Fear of Abandonment. Now I'm out of hospital and kind of getting my head all stable and everything. I'm ready to start making content again and I can't thank you guys enough for sticking by me. Just like I said in the video yesterday, it means that like, honestly from the bottom of my heart, it's just great to have that support. God, my heart's beating really fast actually making this video. Um, as you guys can tell, like I'm in another location again. If any of you guys followed me early last year, this is like a spare room in my nan's house that I'm staying at at the moment. It's nothing fancy in the background or whatever, but you know, it's all I've got at the moment and it's good enough for me. So hopefully it's good enough for you guys too. Anyway, the fear of abandonment. So the fear of abandonment is a very common symptom for people who live with borderline personality disorder or emotionally unstable personality disorder. But it can also um, be a symptom of uh, other personality, uh, sorry, other disorders and illnesses um, to do with mental health as well. It often comes from and I'm not saying always, I'm saying often, uh, spawns from like a, a, tra a traumatic childhood experience. But as I say, it can come from um, experiences later on in, in life. I mean, it's usually linked to some sort of traumatic event where, you know, there's been a detachment or um, separation of some kind. And yeah, it just, that one traumatic experience, it just eventually, if it's not dealt with properly, grows into it grows into a fear, like a, just just like you would fear, I don't know, uh, spiders, for example. Just just what happens. Um, for me personally, it stems from mostly from when my parents split up at like the age of seven. Uh, you know, me, my brother, and my mum moved. My dad stayed in the old house. Um, at the time, I didn't see it as like something to worry about, abandonment or anything, but I just think where I was too young to kind of deal with it, um, it just kind of like boiled up subconsciously. And then when I was like a teenager and I kind of all thinking back to it and yeah, it just, I found myself, you know, really worrying about people leaving me or ditching me or, or whatever. I think it also stems as well, sort of like my teenage years and early adult years, just relationship breakups that, I didn't particularly want to happen, you know, not whether I caused it or not, it's not, that's not what I'm getting at. The point is that someone's left me and it's left me heartbroken. And then you get into another relationship or a friendship or whatever. And you think, oh, how's, you know, what happens when, if that comes to an end, you know, how do I deal with it? So whether you've got BPD or not, or the fear of abandonment can be really, really unpleasant. It's, it's horrible. You know, you start to think that people are going to leave you you think that people don't want to talk to you anymore you think that they you know and you're just going to be alone forever you know it's it's not nice you know um it kind of can cause you to behave really sort of in a needy way um and i'm speaking from experience here i'm going to be completely honest uh yeah if if i feel like in a relationship that I get the feeling that someone's going to leave me. You know, there might not be any kind of evidence to suggest that that's happening, but you end up looking at all these little details and overthinking things like, oh, she didn't put as many kisses in the message um, as last time. Uh, you know, she, oh, she's going to leave me, or she didn't say I love you when I said I love you first. You know, and because you've got that fear of abandonment, you just think, oh my god, that, that that's what that means. They're gonna they're gonna leave me. You know, I've experienced this before. It was so unpleasant. They're gonna do that, and then, you know. It's very easy to get needy. It's easy to start getting paranoid and anxious, you know? You're like, shit, what do, what do I do? What do I do? And you probably have all these thoughts going through your head about the reasons why this person's going to leave. You start questioning yourself. You're like, oh, crap, did I do that wrong? Did I not do that right? Was I, was I, you know, and then you think, am I overthinking this? And you're like, no, I'm not overthinking this. And you're like, no, no, I am. Over There's no way that person's going to leave me, you know? I've been a good friend to them or I've been a good partner to them or I've done everything, I've ticked all their boxes, I've done everything for them. There's no way they could possibly leave me. And then you think, oh my God, am I needy? And then you think, oh shit, I've got to keep my distance. 
and then go, oh, am I keeping too distant? Are they going to lose interest in me? There's just so many factors. And you just, you, you become like a private investigator and a, a, a superior analyst. You overthink every single detail, of every single interaction. And then when you do talk to me, like, shit, why the hell did I say that? It's just going to push them away from me. Oh my God, they're going to leave me. <sighs> Yeah, I know I've been talking really fast in this video, but that's literally the kind of process of thinking that goes on. I know it does in me. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm sure you guys can agree with me. You know, gets that time in a, in a friendship or a relationship, you know, you, you know, just things, you, things appear different from your perspective. They're probably not different at all, but you just think and think and think. And you're like, shit, what did I, what did I do wrong? And because you think they're, gonna leave you in some kind of way you start to question you know your confidence just drops your self-esteem like shit maybe i'm not i'm not a very good lover i'm not a good friend i'm not a good like work colleague family member schoolmate whatever you know you just it's just what happens and it's horrible your mind just doesn't switch off you just think i can't relax until i know the truth and i know for my for my experience that's exactly what it's like like Every question that pops into my head, I think, oh shit, I need to ask them that. And you start asking questions and questions and questions. And then you're doing more damage just doing that. You're pushing people away. And I know it's really hard because you, your mind just can't relax. You know, you just can't relax. You don't want to be alone. You don't want to stop speaking to that friend. You don't want that relationship to break down. And you just do everything you can conceive. You can conceive all these crazy things that you should be doing to just keep hold of that person, you know? It's exhausting and you can't relax and, and you end up pushing them away, you know? They're probably thinking, oh, just fucking give me a break or just like, I don't need this right now. And I'm no master at this. I can honestly say I'm no master when it comes to like relaxing when I think someone's gonna leave me. I mean, it's been happening late, you know? My current relationship or whatever kind of state that's in. Like, in the beginning, I was massively needy. And that even got pointed out to me, you know? I find it, I found it hard to accept. And, you know, I kind of, I, I, did ex I did accept some of it and I thought, shit, yeah, okay, maybe I just need to calm down a bit here. Like, it must be really fucking annoying having this person just bombard you with messages and stuff. Um, yeah, so what do you do about it? What's, what can you actually do? I mean, Honestly, sometimes you just got to give people space and you can't force people to love you. You can't force people to like you. You can't force anyone or to do anything realistically. If that person just isn't, you know, feeling the connection like you are, it's better just to get the pain over and done with. You know, uh, the bitter truth, as much as it hurts and it tastes horrible, is going to do much you know it's going to do more for you in the long run than fooling yourself or that person fooling you into thinking that they should carry this on you know you've got to be grown up about it you've got to talk try and talk to that person just say look be honest with me you know are you feeling this you know should we continue this should we go our separate ways because it's hurting it's hurting me just thinking like this all the time it's probably annoying you my behavior towards you just be honest with each other that's all you can do you know and that's all you can do, you know? It's really hard to let go of people that you've been, you've known for years, whether it's a relationship, a friendship or, or whatever, but there's no point holding on to something if it's just gonna cause more pain in the long run, okay? But only you can accept that, okay? And it's only you that can bring that conversation forward, all right? Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I do like reading your comments. It's, it's a really good insight into how you guys think or behave or whatever so anyway guys thank you very much for watching this video all the best